two trains, 11 engines, one crash, and one video. Welcome to the Kismet train collision. On June 14, 2006, a BNSF southbound manifest train was approaching its stopping point at the south end of Kismet Siding, near the town of Madera, California. This train was not just a manifest, but a power move as well, with seven engines on the head end. The leader was BNSF-9-4059, then followed by NREX-SD-50-5473, an XNS unit, which began life as Conrail-6829, a BNSF H1-9-1065, an XBN lease unit, FURX SD40-2-8110, BNSF X Santa Fe GP30-2437, XBN SD40-2-7065, and another H1 painted-9-997. The train that the manifest was supposed to stop for on the main was a unit train, which was supposed to run around it on the siding and continue its trip. This train had all dash nines as power, four of them. Leading the pack was BNSF-9-4479, a fake bonnet painted dash 9-4715, NS-9-40CW-8967, and finally BNSF-9-4576. The northbound 4479 had priority and passed an approach divergence signal shortly before the sighting. They thought they were all good, all clear of the manifest. However, they turn the corner and see the light of the other train. As they get closer, they realize that it's moving. The northbound signal was a diverging clear, indicating that they had clearance to go into the siding. However, at the last second, it changed to red over red because the southbound rolled across the switch. The southbound engineer realizes this and bails out. And then... The trains collide head-on, derailing both of them. 4479's event recorder camera blue screens, but still the mic picks up the sound from the derailment. Both lead engines suffered catastrophic damage to their left-hand front sides. The trailing units tipped over and buried themselves into the dirt and sand adjacent to the tracks. So what caused the signal passed at danger, which resulted in 11 engines going off the track? During interviews with the southbound engineer, BNSF had to follow their standard procedures and conduct a drug and alcohol test of the engineer. Sure enough, the engineer tested positive and crack cocaine was found in his system. And as everyone knows, you should never have drugs in your system on the job. Similar to the behavior of the three Conrail crew that were involved in the chase collision of 1987. But no matter the drug, they impair your ability to operate machinery consciously whether that's drive a car or drive a locomotive. When rail fans looked at the damage of the engines, they thought almost all of them were goners. However, it came as a surprise to many when BNSF decided to repair all but one of the engines involved. 997 was repaired and painted back into its original H1 scheme. However, it has a slightly different font on its numbers. 1065 was repaired and repainted into the H3 scheme. 4576, similar to 997, was repaired and repainted back into its original paint scheme of H2, and it also has a different font on its number decals. 4715 was repaired, but lost its fake bonnet scheme, as BNSF opted to paint it into the newest H3 scheme. However, the biggest shock came when 4059 and 4479 were spotted on the line again, repaired. 4059 looked almost new and had retained its H2 scheme. 4479 was repainted into H3. The SD40-2 survived as well. 8110 was repaired and continued its career as a lease unit. 
while 7065 was also repaired and continued its career on BNSF. In 2008, however, when BNSF was purchasing their ES44C4s, they decided to get rid of 7065 and instead sell it to Helm Leasing to continue service as an HLCX lease unit, which only the reporting mark was patched, and it retained its number of 7065. Its career as a lease unit lasted from 2008 to 2013, when in 2013, Norfolk Southern bought 7065 and put it on their roster, numbered 3517. 8967 went back to NS and continued its career as well, although in 2019, it was or will be retired for rebuilding as an AC44C6M. The unlucky one was the SD50. NS or NREX 5473, which was the only locomotive from the wreck that was deemed a total loss. It was towed away to a BNSF shop and scrapped. Finally, there is another detail I'd like to point out. This crash was investigated by the FRA and not the NTSB. As a result, the FRA decided to release the event recorder camera footage from 4479 to the public. Soon after, the footage was uploaded to YouTube, which the most popular video has gotten almost 9 million views since its upload in 2007. Pretty cool. Another thing that the video does is give us a reminder so that we don't forget about the Kismet train collision and that railroad employees hopefully don't forget that they're not supposed to have drugs on the job.